Jesus was never in a hurry. I know, crazy, right? I mean, he was only on a quest to save the world. But yet you never see Jesus in a hurry. Uh, this was an observation that John Mark Comer pointed out in his brilliant book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I read it to start this year and it profoundly messed with me. Uh, this was pre-pandemic. I was just coming off an incredibly busy season. And the book really challenged me to think through my busyness, to ponder how often I am in a hurry, rushing from this to that and just slowing down a bit. And I was reminded of this importance not long ago. Uh, it was a Friday morning just a couple weeks ago and I was on my long run. It was 6.35 in the morning because I remember it well. And I ran right through here. And as I do on my runs, I'm always saying hi to everyone, especially in the midst of the pandemic. I just feel like we need to be more and more connected. And so I'll go out of my way to like shout and say, hey, good morning or whatnot. But as I was running right past here, there was a woman sitting right where I'm sitting right now in her mid thirties. And I just said, hey, good morning. And she replied with the same. But as I was continuing my run, it dawned on me very quickly that didn't seem like a good morning for her. And it was just one of those moments that just hit me differently. And I just had a sense from God, you need to turn around and go back and talk to her. You know, and you start playing these kind of games in your head. Really, is that what I'm supposed to do? Is this really God talking? It was just like, ah, just, just go talk with her. And so in the two minutes it took me to circle around and come back, she had already gotten up and started to make a way around the corner of the building behind me. But I caught her attention and I just came up to her and said, hey, I don't mean to intrude, but are you doing okay? And she goes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing fine. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, God, thanks. Now, now I feel like a creeper. I feel like a bit of an idiot here. But I just had this sense that I needed to press further. And so I just looked at her a little bit deeper and said, hey, are you really okay? And she replied with, no, I'm not actually doing okay. She said, I'm an OR nurse and last night we lost a patient and I was just so devastated by it. There was nothing we could do, but it was just a, a painful moment. And I came home and I took it out of my family and took it out of my family again this morning. And so I'm just out here processing, decompressing, just trying to cool down a bit before I go home. And I just looked at her and I said, I am so sorry. I said, I know this pandemic has been so challenging. I said, I don't understand exactly what you go through, but thank you for the incredible work that you do because I know that it's not easy based on just the conversations I'm having with my other friends who are in the medical world as well. And then she said to me, she says this whole situation is compounded because I just lost my grandma. And she said, it just feels like the reality of death is just hitting me really hard right now. And so I just let her talk for a few more minutes and I just said, hey, you know, what's your name? And I gave her mine and I just finished the conversation by saying, listen, I don't know if this is going to be offensive to you or if this is going to be encouraging. But typically on my runs, I take time and just pray for people that God lays on my heart. And I'm going to be praying for you this morning that you would process well and that you would heal in the midst of these trying circumstances. She kind of looked at me like, okay, you're pushing me a little bit beyond my comfort zone. But then she just loosened up and said, yeah, actually, I would really appreciate that. And so I just took off on my run. I didn't feel like it would have been helpful to pray with her. I felt like we kind of hit her lid. But then as I began to run and started to pray for her, a couple of thoughts started to go through my mind. 
Uh, on the one hand, I was super grateful to have had the conversation. But on the other hand, I was saddened because I thought, how many times have I missed out on opportunities like this because I was moving too fast? I was in a hurry and I didn't have any margin for any interruptions. And as I was thinking about that, another thought came into my mind, which was what had already happened that morning? I was planning on just under a two hour run. And so I got up shortly before five because it takes me about an hour to get properly hydrated, uh, to get some food in my system, to give it a chance to digest, to fill my hydration vest with all the fluids that I need and then to be able to stretch properly before I take off. And when I woke up just before five, it was already 75 degrees and 93% humidity, and the heat was rising. And so I knew that I needed to be gone before six. So my goal was 5.55 in the morning. And so as I'm going through and getting all ready, I'm running a little bit behind and it's about six o'clock, and I recognize that I don't have enough hydration in my vest. And I had just gotten a water bladder that goes in the back of the hydration vest. And so I have enough water that I don't have to refuel during my run back at home. I can do a full out and back. And so I'm just getting ready to throw this thing into my backpack and I start to recognize that the hose is leaking. I mean, I had just gotten this thing, but I hadn't tested it yet. Problem number one. And so uh, I'm throwing the water in, I stick it in my backpack, and then I put the vest on, and all of a sudden I can just feel the water running down my back. And it's like, oh, no way. And this is a great company, this is a great product. I've never had any issues, and so I am messing with it, and it's finally 15 minutes later that I realize I cannot reconcile this problem. I just need to go. And so when I started my run, it was 6.15, the sun had already been up for 35 minutes. I could just feel the heat just rising quickly, and I was already frustrated and annoyed when I started my run. And when I came running by here, it was only two and a half miles into my run and everything within me said, just keep going. You've got to get this run done. Every minute counts. And yet it was like God just invaded that moment and said, this is so much more important than your run right now. And I believe that if God hadn't been working on me over the last several months, I may have just blown past this moment. But I believe that this was a moment that God orchestrated because if I would have left when I was originally planning, she probably wouldn't have been here. If I would have left three minutes later, she would have been around that corner and I would have never have seen her. It was a moment that God had orchestrated. Now, I tell you this story not because it was like, oh, Brad nailed that moment. As I mentioned earlier in the story, I was deeply saddened because I am so often in a hurry that I know that I have missed opportunities like this. I'm somebody who's got the agenda and I've got everything kind of laid out and I'm always trying to get another thing done. And so like I am just packing my schedule to the gills. Like I don't often have time for margin. And because there isn't margin in my schedule, any kind of interruption is an annoyance for me. It's something to be dealt with quickly so that I can continue doing what I need to do. And yet it was John Mark Comer's book that really hit me square in the face where God got my attention and said, you need to slow down. Now granted, this pandemic has been a little bit more helpful in that department, but nonetheless, it's so easy to have our schedules so packed that we don't have time for distraction. You know, when you start reading through the Gospels and you read them carefully, 
you recognize that Jesus always had time for distractions. In fact, one of the things that fascinates me about the Gospels and really about the entire Bible is that the writers don't have unlimited space to record stories. They don't have, you know, a Pages or Microsoft Word doc to be able to put in as many words as they want. They have limited space on the scroll. And so they only include what is shocking, what is surprising, what is meant to challenge you. And so what Jesus had for breakfast one morning, we don't know because it doesn't matter. What we do get are all of these stories where he is encountering someone, where he is responding to a question, where he is engaging in conversation. And if you read the Gospels carefully, they're almost always stimulated by what could be considered an interruption. Jesus is walking along the road. Somebody asks a question. Jesus is in a town. Somebody comes through a roof. And there's this moment of distraction. And yet Jesus engages the moment. He engages the interruption. And it's the stories that we get. On one particular occasion, this is recorded in Luke 8, Jesus is on his way to help Jairus and his daughter who is on her deathbed. And as they're walking along, a woman comes up and she kind of throws some elbows to get through the crowd and she grabs the corner of Jesus' garment and Jesus stops and he goes, who did that? And Peter's response is, um, everyone, because it's in the midst of a crowd. And Jesus goes, no, 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 somebody touched me, power went out from me. And he has this conversation with this woman who comes forward and shares why she did what she did. And by the way, we tackled this story in episode 16 in the teaching series called Seizing Tassels. You can check that out there. But what's so fascinating to me is that Jesus, in the midst of this interruption, engages a conversation with this woman while the rest of the crowd is like, this little girl is going to die. You need to get there. And yet Jesus has time for the interruption. And this is what has been challenging me, is that do I have time for the interruption? Will I entertain the interruption? Because the interruption might just be the point. Now, not every interruption may be the thing. And that's why I'm saying that we need to entertain the interruptions. And entertain meaning is that when an interruption occurs, to not just race past it, not just to see it as this nuisance that needs to be overcome, but to just pause long enough to go, God, is this an interruption worth entertaining? Or is this an interruption that just needs to be pushed through? Because some interruptions are things that we just need to push through. But other times, those interruptions may be the very thing that God is inviting us into. It might be the very thing we need to engage. And so may we entertain the interruptions. Because it's the interruptions and the stories that ensue that are the stories that we remember. They're the stories that we pass on. Because it wasn't us engaging our agenda. It was us engaging God's agenda. And in those moments, some of the most meaningful and significant stories unfold before us. And unless we are willing to entertain the interruptions we might just miss them. So friends, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for listening. And may you walk out the text well in your life.